My name is Jason Mata. I am uh, one of the head coaches at Advocates Boxing. This is my son, Jason Mata Jr. Uh, I'm also known as Coach uh, Pops. And my granddaughter calls me Coach or Coach Pop. So you can call me the one. We're here today because we're going to discuss a little bit about boxing. Uh, we're going to do some um, uh, predictions. Uh, but first, I want to introduce my son, Jason Mata Jr. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. My name is Jason and Mata Jr. I've been boxing for about 20 years. I'm 25 years old. I'm currently in the USA right now. I'm starting out there in Japan. Uh, I do plan to go pro in the future. Um, I had an amateur record from when I was a young kid. But, uh, you know. Hey, so you're in Japan right now. You're talking about possibly going pro in Japan, right? Yes, I am. Okay, cool. And so you started over there, so there's a gym out there. You want to give a shout out to that gym? Yeah, shout out to the TNT Boxing Gym. Great trainer, great people, we have a great coaching staff out there. So shout out to all y'all there as you guys on the team. And you guys you did play for the sparring. How, tell us real quick, how, what's, the, what's their style out there? How are they different from USA, uh, USA Box? Japanese boxers are very technical, they're very in and out, they're very fast. They kind of almost have like a, a little karate style, where they're very linear about their movements. But they're, they're, they're amazing warriors, they're amazing fighters, and they're uh, just so blessed to be working with each and every one. Well, that's what I do. A check hook to the body kind of works sometimes. I think that's what he kind of sticks with a little bit. But we're going to get into, again, this is our first podcast, you know, and we're blessed to have it. Uh, I'm blessed to have my son here with me. Because remember, I can only go back to Japan to go back to Navy. But when we do our next one, he's going to be on you know, some kind of a live stream with us. And we'll have other special guests too. Again, thank you guys for joining us. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also feel free to comment on, uh, on the space below. So we're going to get into this real quick about Canelo and Bogal. You know, I had Canelo win the first, I had him win the first six rounds, four rounds to two. I think he kind of let out the gas a little bit, up the gas pedal. Uh, I kind of win one more round after that, so I can see how Bogal won, you know, won the fight. But what do you think about that? Like, what do you think about a potential rematch? I think, uh, I think in that first fight, you know, I think Canelo was doing good in the first four or five rounds, maybe to give it to him. I think he was doing real good. Uh, every time you go up a weight or down a weight, it takes different tools in your body. I think this time, you know, he fought a guy who was a really good boxer. He had, you know, basic foundation to get a lot of speed. He, you know, took it to Canelo, and Canelo, he couldn't get after me to. I think this time coming around, Canelo's probably going to, you know, work more on his uh, endurance, his stamina, you know, try to come back at him. Uh, the first few rounds is going to tell the whole fight because, you know, Canelo's going to have to let him know early on that this is going to be like the first fight, you know. Let the world know that this time we come in different. But if can't adjust, then we might see repeat of the first fight. So let's just see how it goes. Yeah, and guys, feel free to comment on what you guys feel about that fight, you know, who you got won, and what do you think will happen in the rematch. Well, let's get into Canelo and Triple G. Uh, that's going to be the third installment of that. Uh, or it's going to be a trilogy. You know, uh, who do you think is going to win that one? For the Canelo Triple G, I have Canelo winning that fight. Uh, have him winning in a more dominant fashion than he did the last two fights. Only because he, he, in his last fight, he took, really took it to Triple G. He knows he can take his punch. He's younger still. You know, Triple G's gotten older. His past few fights have been a little lackluster. Even though he's gotten the knockouts, he's still doing what he had to do. His opponents are not up to par as to ones that Canelo's been fighting in the past few years. Yeah. And I think, I think Triple G, has been uh, shown that he has a little more open openings in his game now. So I think the Nose will exploit that. I think he's still gonna bring that youth and he has to make a statement. After this Bobo fight has been very uh, uh, redemption for him. He has to come back and prove to the people around that he's still Canelo, he's still strong, he can still come out and make make that statement. That's a good point. That's a very good point. So yeah, I think uh, you know Canelo's looking for redemption. Triple D hasn't really had that, you know, good competition like like Canelo has. And I had a dream that Canelo was gonna knock him out in the seventh round in a dominant fashion. Uh, we're gonna get, you know, we got we're, we're kind of limited on what we're doing here, but we're gonna give props to Ryan Garcia for his showing his last fight, did very good. But we also gotta give props to our hometown boy, Bam Rodriguez, for his championship uh, caliber fighting. He's big, he's fought the last two fights with world championship caliber. Knock him out. That guy is awesome. He's gonna he's gonna do great things in his career. He's gonna give him a shout out. And we'll get into the Davis and uh, I'm sorry, we're gonna get to Spence and Crawford. Who do you got on that fight? Spence and Crawford. I gotta I gotta go with my 
fucking well, Texas. I gotta go with yeah. Spence. Me too, Spence. Spence is woo, Spence is cool. I got but I do gotta give Crawford his flowers. You know, he is yeah. he is a tremendous fighter. He's one of those once in a lifetime fighters. You know, he has very technical abilities, he's very fast, he gets hard. I mean, yeah. That last fight he had with Sean Porter was I didn't I didn't expect it to go that way. Yeah. You know, I didn't expect yeah. Sean Porter, you know, to get to yeah. get stopped like that. That's, That's a good fight. Sean Porter is an amazing, incredible fighter. I didn't expect to come from that. Yeah. But Errol Spence is a strong fighter, he yeah. proved that in his last fight. He could really take it to him. I have a good feeling about Errol Spence. He's really gonna take it to Crawford. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure Crawford's not going to do it. In some aspects, I'm sure he'll just as be big for a tremendous fight and for a great fight and long yeah. for the books. Yeah, we're, again, we're Texas boys. We, we're all about Texas. Yep. We do get props to all the other chaps and wherever they may come from, but in this case, I think Spence is going to take them. You know, also give a shout out to the, the Turkey Hut in Houston, Texas. That's where we, that's where we met Spence one day, so we don't forget that. And we'll you all the way, Spence. Uh, we also got uh, Danny Garcia versus Benavides. We think about a 154 pound fight. That's that that fight sounds crazy to me. Danny Garcia, you know, yeah. I believe his last fight was with actually Errol Spence was last fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so right. you know, Danny Garcia, he's going up the weight, different weight class. I'm pretty sure he's already acclimated to it. Yeah. Um, Benavides though, he's he's just in his last fight he was a beast. Um, time does tell though. So let's see if Danny Garcia can carry that weight up to 154, and let's see if Benavides can you know withstand the the the, the tell of time. You know.